Consider this expression. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 4 times. Is there another way of writing this expression? It turns out that there is. Instead of writing 3 4 times, you can just say this is 3 to the 4th power. Thus we have the use of exponents. Exponents is a nice way of writing a repetitive expression that looks like this. So basically anytime you have repeat multiplication, you can use exponents to simplify uh, the expression. So for example, let's say if we have five x variables multiplied to each other, instead of written or instead of writing it in its expanded form, we could say this is simply x to the fifth power. Another example, let's say if we have x plus five times x plus five times x plus five three times, this is equivalent to x plus five raised to the third power. Consider these four examples. I'm going to write them on a board, but go ahead and write them another way using exponents. Feel free to pause the video as I write these problems on the board. Okay, let's start with the first one. So we have a single 4, which you can say 4 to the first power, or just leave it as 4. And then we have two x variables multiplied to each other. So x times x is simply x squared. And there are three y variables. So we can write it as y cubed. So this single term is called a monomial. And so the answer is 4x squared y cubed. Now what about the second one? We have 1, 3. We have 2 a variables and 3 b variables. So this is going to be a squared b to the third. In the next example, we have 3, negative 5. So it's a negative 5 to the third power, which we can reduce it to a single number. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. And positive 25 times negative 5 that's negative 125. In the last example, we have a 7 and 2 y plus 2 terms. So it's 7 y plus 2 squared. So now you know how to take an expression in its expanded form and write it as a single monomial. Sometimes you may have problems where you have to work it out in reverse. So for example, go ahead and expand this binomial completely. So 8 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2. x to the fourth is x times x times x times x. y to the fifth is 5y variables multiplied to each other. So that's 8x to the fourth y to the fifth. Here's another example. Go ahead and expand this one. Let's say we have 9, c to the 4th, d to the 3rd. 9 is 3 times 3. c to the 4th is c times c times c times c. d to the 3rd is d times d times d. So that's how you can expand certain monomials. Sometimes, in a typical homework assignment, you might be asked to evaluate certain expressions. Go ahead and evaluate 2 to the 4th power. The first thing I would do is expand it. This is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 4 times. 2 times 2 is 4. And 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. Try some more examples. Go ahead and expand 3 to the 3rd and 10 to the 3rd. Evaluate the entire expression. So 3 to the 3rd is 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And so that's the answer for the first one.
10 to the third power is 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 times 10 is 1,000. So that's a quick and simple way to evaluate expressions using exponents. Here's some more examples. 4 to the third, negative 7 squared, and negative 7 squared. 4 cubed is simply 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64. Negative 7 enclosed in parentheses and then squared. It's going to be negative 7 times negative 7, which is positive 49. Now, this is different from negative 7 squared without the parentheses. The 2 only affects the 7, not the negative sign. So we have one negative sign and two positive 7 numbers. So this is going to be negative and then positive 7 times positive 7, which is positive 49. So overall, the answer is negative 49 because there's only one negative sign as opposed to 2. And so make sure you understand the difference between these two types of problems and what answers they're going to give you. Now sometimes you may have to deal with a zero exponent. Now what you need to know is that anything raised to the zero power is 1. 3 to the zero is 1. Now what about negative 3 to the zero? Negative 3 to the zero is basically the same as this expression. The zero only affects the 3, not the negative sign. So this is going to be negative, and then 3 to the 0 is 1, so overall this is negative 1. Now, in our last example, the negative 3, the negative sign, is affected by the 0 because it's within the parentheses. So this whole thing is going to be 1. So make sure you know the difference between these two problems and what answers they're going to give you. Now, other times, you may need to evaluate expressions. For example, let's say if we want to evaluate a squared plus b squared, where a is 3 and b is 4. You might see that in a typical pre-algebra course. So the first thing you need to do is plug in the numbers. Replace a with 3 and b with 4, and then evaluate. 3 squared, that's 3 times 3. 4 squared is 4 times 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. So this adds up to 25. Let's try this one. 2x cubed minus y squared. And let's say that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to negative 3. Go ahead and evaluate the expression using those numbers. So let's begin by replacing x with 2 and substituting y with negative 3. Let's expand it. 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2. Negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Negative 3 times negative 3 that's positive 9. And 2 times 8 is 16. So we have 16 minus 9, which is equal to positive 7. And so that's the answer for this problem. Here's the next example. 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. And let's say x is equal to 5. Evaluate the expression. So let's begin by replacing x with 5. 5 squared is 5 times 5. And 5 times 5 is 25. 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 25 is 50. So we have 50 plus 15 minus 5. 50 plus 15 is 65, and 65 minus 5 is 60. And so that's the final answer in this example. Let's try another example. 3 times 2y minus 5 squared. And let's say y is equal to 4. Feel free to pause the video and work on this example. So let's replace y with 4. Two times four is eight. And eight minus five is three. 
3 squared, which is 3 times 3, that's 9. And so we have 3 times 9, which overall is 27. And that's the answer.